thing. It's, it, that scarcity hit, you know, when it really became important. So now I just like skip the first few days and most of the time just do a short 48 hour, maybe 72 hour special. Hey, podcast listener, you're about to discover insider tips, tricks, and secrets to making more sales and converting more prospects into customers with email marketing. For more information about the email marketing podcast or the autoresponder guy, go to dropdeadcopy.com slash podcast. Hey, everybody, it's John McIntyre here, the autoresponder guy, and it's time for episode 10 of the Email Marketing Podcast, where we talk about the top tips, tricks, and secrets for making more sales and growing your revenue with email marketing. Today, I'll be talking to Terry Dean, a 17-year internet marketing veteran. Some people call him an internet marketing grandfather. Now, Terry's going to talk about his golden glove, a framework for finding hidden profit centers in your business. This This episode is less about email marketing tactics and a lot more about understanding marketing strategy. So it's good stuff. Um, it's very useful, very nitty gritty. And after this episode, you should have a list of things you can do right away. Now, just quickly, you might be out here a bit of traffic, cars, planes in the background. <laughs> I'm in Thailand and sometimes it's hard to find a quiet place to record these things. So I'm outside a cafe on a bit of a busy road. Now, to get the show notes for this episode of the Email Marketing Podcast, go to dropdeadcopy.com slash EP10. Now, we have another review. It's a long one, and it's from Jonathan Roseland from the US, who has a website called Limitless Mindset. Here it is. Email marketing like a boss. If you, like me, dear podcast listener, have become weary of business podcasts and internet marketing gurus, then this is one podcast that's worth your time. If you, like me, are sick of business podcasts that simply remix tactics you've been hearing for five years, common sense and self-help platitudes, then download an episode or two of a 25-minute dose of long-tail information. In the most recent episode, John interviewed a real world-class douchebag and email marketing impresario who shared a great tactic of sending people a warning email and eventually removing them from your list if they aren't opening your email. I'd like to implement this for my biohacking website, Limitless Mindset, which is linked in the show notes. But how do I set this up in Aweber? Thanks and keep up the good work, John. Jonathan Roseland, Medellin, Colombia. Thank you for the review, Jonathan. Really appreciate this kind of thing. I love reading them. If you want to uh, leave a review, go to dropdeadcopy.com slash podcast. You can follow the links. Now, about that question, how would you send people a warning email on Aweber? Jonathan, I'm not sure if that you can even do that on Aweber. I've thought about it. I do use Aweber for most of my stuff, and I just don't think Aweber is advanced like that. Now, the real world-class douchebag guy, I'm assuming you're meaning John McCulloch, he uses Office Autopilot, which is two to 300 bucks a month, which would probably work for you, or you can do it with any of the more advanced programs. But as far as I understand, you cannot do it with Aweber. Uh, however, you could manually do it and go in and send people, you know, go in you know, once a month and send an email you could uh, create a segment of your subscribers who haven't uh, opened an email, say, in 30 days, and you could send them all an email saying, I'm going to unsubscribe you unless you reply to this email or something like that. But it would be manu- manual and it would be a pain in the ass. Anyway, now we've got some great guests coming up in the next month or two. One is a special forces soldier turned marketing consultant, and uh, he tells a story from Iraq about how he used storytelling to solve battlefield problems. That'll be a really cool episode. And another upcoming guest is an e-commerce expert, and he's going to lay out an action plan for e-commerce owners who want to use email marketing marketing in their business and his experience a good in his experience a good email marketing campaign can boost revenue by 10 to 15 percent so uh look out for those episodes now let's head over and talk to terry dean and his golden glove it's john mcintyre here the autoresponder guy i'm here with terry dean an internet marketing veteran how you doing today terry i'm doing excellent good to hear good to hear Sounds like you're really excited, which uh, we kind of just talked about that. That you're excited about what you're doing. Let's start off by talking about like who are you and what do you do. Well, I'm an internet marketing coach that I've now been online for 17 years. <laughs> so uh, um, I've even been called one of the internet marketing grandfathers wow. of online marketing. How's David that, Perdue called me that. Feel? It makes me feel old because I turned 40 this month also. Happy birthday. Um, <laughs> you know, but I don't feel like a grandfather. Um, but what I end up doing now is back in 2006, I started coaching a lot of entrepreneurs one-on-one with their businesses. And that really you know, excites me about the business because one of the, my real drivers is a curiosity of getting in. And basically what I get to do for a living is the same thing I did as a child, which is I get to go into businesses, take them apart and put them back together again. But as a child, I wasn't really good at putting them back together. <laughs> but that's what I get to do every day. And that does excite me about the business. Right. And you sound totally excited just in the way you speak. I mean, like, you're like, uh, 
dripping in enthusiasm. Um, well, again, I, I love what I do, and that's the you know beauty of the internet lifestyle is you get to do something that you love. All right. Absolutely. Okay. So I know you do like you got websites out there. You do email marketing. So the idea here is that we talk to experts like yourself about what specifically like you do in your own business to build it, you know, related to email, related to copywriting, that kind of thing. And I know you mentioned you want to talk about the Golden Globe that you use to review websites and email. So let's go through that. Give us an introduction. What is the Golden Glove? Well, the Golden Glove basically came about because over the 17 years I've been online, I've been to a lot of internet marketing conferences. I've done a lot of webinars. And at these, um, it was very early on, they started asking me to do what we called hot seats. Okay, a hot seat was they take they pick somebody from the audience, put them up on the stage. We'd ask them about their website, you know. We ask them about their business, and we'd find you know quickly find ways to improve their business and the results. And I've you know if you include the hot seats, the um, the webinars that I've done this on, because I've also been a part of you know membership sites where we basically ran webinars, you know, multiple webinars per month where we were reviewing the members' websites and improving the results, and also the one-on-one clients. I've easily done thousands of website reviews, you know, reviewing their websites, reviewing their emails, reviewing their sales videos, and all types of online persuasion. And I basically created the Golden Glove as a five-step system to quickly spot any type of problem that's in their marketing and you know, find out why their website isn't converting. I almost call these five, you can consider them like conversion cracks on the website that are leaking out their profits. And the other reason I needed to have a nice you know, st- system like this is during a lot of the hot seats, what I like to do was not just be the expert up there saying, oh, you need to do this, do this, and this. I wanted to have a quick system that I could teach the attendees and them take my place. And basically, I wanted to replace myself there. And by giving them these five steps, the golden glove, you know, the five fingers of the hand to fix their website, they were able to do most of the reviews. And I could sit back and just um, facilitate the discussion at that point. Okay. Well, let's get right into it. What's the first step or point, whatever you call it? Well, the, the first step on the golden glove is the, the desperate problem. Okay, so that means that you need to be focusing on a desperate problem, and I call it a desperate problem because it's almost like you know the need to get away from a hungry bear. Hmm. So you're traveling in the woods, and there's the hungry bear, or it's you know a bear protecting its young. You've got to get out of there. All right, it's a it's a desperate problem, and sometimes um, people don't understand it when I call it a desperate problem. They're like, well, you know, I they might say I sell to um, people who want to learn the guitar to get play the guitar better. That's not a desperate problem. It is if you're one of the guitar players. Hmm. It is if you have to play coming up and um, you're scared that you're going to make a fool of yourself. Right. You know, you know, it is a desperate problem for them. So it might not be a desperate problem for you anymore. When I say a desperate problem, this means that it's a problem that they're thinking about, something they're focused on, you know, that has their focus. Um, there's even an old copywriting model. I know Dan Kennedy teaches a copywriting model of problem, agitate, solve. Hmm. So just with that little three-step copywriting model. That means problem is the first one. You know, we're going to cover what the problem is. We're going to agitate the problem more, and then we're going to solve the problem. So out of his three steps, two of them are based on the problem. Yeah. And any type of copy, I always look, are you covering the problem? Is it a desperate problem that people are really feeling? And do you know your audience that that's a problem? And do you talk about that problem there? For example, if I tell a story in my email, I'm going to talk about the problem that I ran into. I mean, I'm sure you've written a lot of email stories Hmm. in your experience. And how many times does the problem come up in the story? All the time. All the time. Every time. And if, you know, pretty much it is every time. So if you're missing the problem, you're missing one of the key elements. And that's true on your website, in video sales copy, and in emails. And I'm surprised how often people miss the problem. They just start, you know, making promises and they don't solve. You know, there's nothing there to solve. Right. So, because I think a lot of people, they're in a market where there is a desperate problem, but they're just not articulating it enough in their copy. So how do they solve this problem, the de- their desperate problem, where they're not nailing the desperate problem? What I do in most cases is I go back to the story. A lot of things I do will go back to the story that we have going on in the business. And so I'll start looking, okay, you know, how did you feel before you solved the problem yourself? You know, how does your customers feel? A lot of times, okay, if, if you can't find it yourself… Oh, here's a really good example of this for, you know, for how I found it. In my coaching, since I do one-on-one coaching, um, I don't think I was articulating the desperate problem as, as well as I should have in the beginning. Mm-hmm. So what I did is after some, I had some clients, is I looked through the testimonials they sent me, and this phrase jumped out at me and became part of my headline. 
Okay. One of the one of the uh, my clients had said in her testimonial, um, "Never feel alone again." Hmm. Online, I immediately grabbed that as one of the problems. You know, the fact that we feel alone online when you're running an online business, it's lonely. Hmm. You know, I didn't realize that until I saw that in her testimonial. So that became part of my headline. And it works extremely well as part of my headline there. And that's because she articulated part of the desperate problem for me. So if you go back in your story and you can't find it in your own story, then look at some of the testimonials you've had so far and look if any of them say the problem that you solve. Yeah. I think there's a really good point there that whatever the problem happens to be, that they need to be sending it in their customers or their prospects' words, not any other way. It has to be in the words so that when the prospect reads that, when the subscriber looks at it, they go, wow, this guy... This guy gets me. Like that's just what I was thinking. Exactly. And I do I there's a lot of strategies, you know, we don't have time here in a quick eversion, but I go through and do a lot of research online and find the problems also, you know, in the customer's own words. Hmm. Things like Amazon reviews, um, tweet grid where you can look at pe- what people are saying on Twitter and forums that you can look through to find people talking about the problem. You can find their exact words to use in your copy to cover the desperate problem that way. Mm, absolutely. Hell yeah. Okay. So now that we've found a desperate problem, what's the Four finger, finger number two. Finger number two is to have a unique promise. Okay, okay? Um, a lot of people or along will will say, okay, we need, you know, we come up with a big benefit or we come up with a big promise, but it needs to be a promise that's unique in in front of a whole bunch of competition. I've worked with a lot of sites, for example, that advertise on AdWords. Well, AdWords, I would consider probably the most competitive environment in the entire world, because if you're advertising on AdWords, you know that. You know, you're not just getting a visitor that's alone with you, all right? Yeah. Basically, it's, it's like being in a, in a room and there's 10 different salespeople side by side and each of you gets to do your presentation because nobody just visits your website. They visit your website. They visit, you know, rank number two in AdWords. They visit rank number three. They're visiting these sites, hmm. okay? So you're visiting everybody else. So how does your promise stand out from everyone else in the market that's surrounding you? Um, does your, here's what I always like to say, you know, this is the test we put on it. Does your promise make people stop in their tracks and say, how in the world will they do that? <laughs> That's what they've got to say with your unique promise. You know, how in the world are they going to do that? It can't just be, you know, the same thing that they've heard a lot of times. We see. Since I'm in the, you know, internet marketing field, that's one of the big mistakes in our field. What most people do in their promise is to just make bigger and bigger promises of this huge amount of money that you're going to make. Hmm. And I'm not comfortable with that at all, plus the fact that it's not legal to do that in the U.S. Yeah. Um, but So what I have to do is I come up with unique promises, unique um, variations to talk about and what we're doing. So, you know, how do you, you know, how do you make a different range? Like, for example, I have a product on um, creating a high-ticket product. Hmm. That talks about how you can create a high ticket product, you know, within the next 48 hours, how to create your own high ticket offer in the next 48 hours. It doesn't sound, you know, like a big promise or anything like that, but it is a unique promise because I'm telling you that you're not just going to create a $10 product. You're going to create, you know, a $500, $1,000 product in 48 hours or less. Yeah. Okay, that is a unique promise that other people aren't talking about. Now it's probably somebody's going to copy that and not have to change it. <laughs> but, but see, it's a, a unique promise that you focus on. And do, does your website have one of those? And I'll even say this, does it have it above the fold? Both the start of a problem and the promise needs to be above the fold on a website. Okay. So before anybody even has to scroll. Okay. So this applies as well. So websites, emails, anytime you're writing any sort of copy, you have to have this unique promise, right? You do. It comes in everything that you're writing. Basically, you consider these the, um, the five persuasion points. Anytime you're trying to do any type of persuasion, because I found that I use these same points, um, even if I'm dealing with people one-on-one. If you're trying to convince your spouse to do what you want, you still end up using these five points. Right, right. It's Yeah, totally. Yeah, persuasion, it kind of never changes. It's always the same thing. It is, and that's why I'm glad I spent you know a lot of time here when I first started. When I first started online, I studied a lot of Jay Abraham material and a lot of Gary Halbert materials. Hmm. And you know, I got my focus in on persuasion, like the very first coach I hired was John Carlton. Wow. So you can see I focused on persuasion. Yeah. Okay. And then so moving on, I've got the the things in here. Number three looks very similar to number two. So let's go over there. What's number three? Number three is overwhelming proof. Okay. And we're not going to have just enough proof. We're going to have overwhelming proof. I almost like to think about it as a lawyer going into a court case. Would the lawyer going into the court case say, you know, well, we have enough proof now, we're going to stop doing our research? Not if they're a very good one. They want to have, you know, overwhelming proof. 
for what they're going to provide. They want to have all the testimonials. They want all the eyewitness accounts. They want a video footage. Right. They want everything they possibly can when they come into the court case, overwhelming proof. proof. Because up, up to this point, we talked about a desperate problem. It's hurting. Okay, we've got a unique promise that stands out from the competition, and, and people are going to say, "How in the world are you going to do that?" Hmm. Now you need to have overwhelming proof that proves that you can do the unique promise. And, and when I review websites, this is the one they fail most often on. Okay. Okay. With websites specifically, and with emails, they you you insert a few little elements of proof. So I haven't seen as you know big of a problem here. But with overwhelming proof, we even call it. Um, Glenn Livingston and I came up with a term. We call it proof hiding disease. That most people have on their websites. And what that means is they take their best proof and they hide it on another page somewhere. Yeah. Okay, for example, like a really bad page that they're off to do it on is they put it on the about page yeah. instead of on the sales page. And what kind of proof am I talking about here? Well, obviously things like testimonials, but other things also. For example, they hide on their about page the fact that they've been doing this you know, for 17 years. You know, they hide on the about page their own story, you know, their background story, which is a form of proof, my own story telling, you know, what happened with this. You know, for for example, with me, anytime I don't tell about delivering pizzas, my profits drop. The fact that I delivered pizzas for a living before I came online, that's part of my back story. That's yeah. also proof that I know what I'm doing. And if I can do this, other people can do it because, you know, I came at the bottom. <laughs> that's where wow. I came in from. Um, but so what, what other proof do you have? And so for proof, think about testimonials, case studies, scientific studies. Um, how do you do this? Video, what, how do I do proof? Well, yeah, how do you do proof for, let's say, that create a high-ticket product in 48 hours? How do you give overwhelming proof in that case? In that case, well, first of all, we're, we're hitting the testimonials first because okay. that's the most important thing. Then also telling the story and how. In that case, I'm actually telling how I'm doing it. So I'm telling, you know, not just here's the promise, but after you start reading into the copy, I tell you how I accomplish that. You know, here's how we do this. Here's how you're going to create this that quickly. So in other words, I actually give the method that you're doing to create it, okay. which is one of the ways that you can do for prep, you know, is you can tell them how you do it, you know, how this works. If you were selling a software program, you could show a demonstration of how it works. Um, an example, even on a membership site, is most of the membership sites that I've consulted with will often take a video inside the membership site showing them a tour somewhere in our sales video or on our sales page. We'll actually show them inside the website and all the stuff they're going to get immediately when they join yep. inside the membership site because that's a demonstration of what they're seeing inside the site. You know, here's what you're getting immediately. If you have, you know, a software program, you show how quickly it works for you, what it does for you. So anything that you can do to prove your point is a major element. Um, an ex another example, if you have degrees, or we, you know, we call it name spaghetti, <laughs> all the degrees that you have or you know, awards in your field, you bring that to the top. If you've been featured on media, you bring that in. For example, this is a totally separate subject, but I did a, um, a press release out and um, I actually did it as a survey to find out what the audience thought about something, sent out a press release about the subject so I could get featured in a lot of media. Mm. But now I've been featured in all the media, guess what I do with all that? <laughs> that becomes proof points to take all the media logos that I showed up on on my website. You know, right. So that's a proof that just as I'm talking to you, I remind myself there's a couple of sites I haven't put it on yet, so I need to quit you know, having proof hiding disease on those sites <laughs> and bring, that, bring having you know, proof up on those. So always think, you know, what's my overwhelming proof? And with websites and email, it might just be something quick you insert. You know, it might just be your story. It might be one testimonial you toss in. It might be one scientific study you review. So it might just be one piece, but that proof point is always there. There's always something in proof. On a website, we do overwhelming proof of all the proof that we can bring in on it. The case, of, you know, um, for example, I have um, a friend who has 11,000 testimonials in his business. Okay, mm. that's, that's, that's amazing. Mm. Um, and he, he'll run, you know, testimonials down the side of his page, okay? Plus, having it all the way down the side of the page, we don't have 11,000 testimonials on one page. He then has links over that you can see, you know, thousands of testimonials on another page <laughs> here. But, but we don't just hide all the pages on the testimony page. They are everywhere also, right. you know, all over his sites plus the separate sites right. for the testimonials. That is overwhelming proof for the site. Right, so you literally cannot miss it. You can't miss it, and that's what you have to say with your website, too, is you cannot miss the proof that you're providing. Nobody believes you or your unique promise that you're offering. 
you reminded me there of I worked for a company back in Sydney, Australia at one stage, and they took all their testimonials because they used to get a lot of them about customer service and the products and things like that, and they turned it into a hardcover book and they would give it out to customers when they came in to uh, see the office. It was like a, a bestseller kind of style, like a hardcover, 300 pages thick, just with testimonials. And now that was such a great idea as far as this proof goes. It, it is. I've seen um, multiple different, you know, small businesses that will have like a little proof book on their, fr- you know, just it, where everybody else has all the magazines and everything else. Mm. They have a book full of all the testimonials from mm. their clients. I've seen a dentist do that and a lawyer do that. Wow. That's really cool. Okay. What's next? What's the ring finger of the uh, golden <laughs> glove? That's going to be your irresistible offer. Okay. As you know, as a copywriter with it, you know, the biggest change we can make to a website isn't the headline. It's the offer. Hmm. That's the biggest, you know, the biggest results that you'll have is changing the offer. Sometimes it's just a small change in price point. I mean, just a tiniest little change in price point. For example, I tested, um, I had a test because everybody sells these $7 products. Hmm. I tested $7, nine ninety-five, and $10, the price point. $10 wiped the floor with the other two. Wow. It just destroyed them, okay? Um, and we're talking like it beat, it, this is what's weird, we're $10 beat nine ninety-five in that case, in that test, by double in sales. And we're talking, you know, I used a very low price product, so it was very easy to get a good number of stats in because of how many sales I could generate. Right. When you're selling a $10 product, you can get a whole lot more stats quicker than when you're selling a $1,000 product. Exactly. (laughs) Okay. You know, because you get, um, you can get so many more sales quickly. We're talking on a conversion rate. I think I was pulling a 26% conversion rate on that at the time. Okay. To my own, it was to my own list though. It wasn't wasn't cold traffic. (laughs) Okay. So you sold that via email. Yes. And, um, you're talking about uh, just that little difference in price point changed the results. But so your irresistible offer, what I really want to think about here is something I heard from Ken McCarthy um, years ago, and that was, you know, assume that every product you're selling um, needs to have a $25,000 value. Okay, just assume that it needs to have a $25,000 value. How are you going to build up the value of your product to be worth $25,000 and then sell it at a discount? It doesn't mean that you actually say on every website, this has a value of 25000 It means in your own mentality, in your own thinking, you're thinking, okay, how can I make this a $25,000 product? You know, how can I add in you know, done-for-you items that make it worth that value? What can I do to my product to make it as awesome as you know, possible? Can I add bonuses that do this? How can I make this an irresistible offer you know, that they're just crazy if they don't take? At other times, it might be as simple as taking a trial off of your product. Hmm. Such as on a membership site, you've seen a lot of websites do you know one dollar to yep. give it a try for the first thirty days, or one dollar to give it a try for the next ten days, or like the first time I ever sold one of my products on a shipping only offer, which I have clients do all the time, which is for I did it for three hundred ninety seven dollar product. It was a course, hmm. and I said you just pay fifteen dollars for shipping today. You'll pay the three ninety seven in thirty days or three payments of you know later on. Yeah. We tripled our sales. Wow. Okay. We had 30% of the kids, kits come back, okay? Yeah. The nice thing is I didn't really consider that even a refund on our merchant account because they came back before they got charged. You know, so your, your merchant account wouldn't even say you have a 30% refund rate. They wouldn't see the charges. But, you know, the, but, you know, but 30 came back, but we had three times the sales. So the profits were much higher doing a trial version like that. And I have clients do that regularly on their systems. Um, I had a client just do that like a month or so ago, and he was selling a $1,000 course. And he told me, he just sent out one email about, you know, during the trial, and he sold like 21 kits. Wow. You know, tw- so he made 21000 from that. And like the month, the month before, you know, the entire month before he had sold like 10. You know, so we're talking a big jump just in that one day of sales that he was doing this. I think he had like a 48-hour special for that. And um, so you can see the, just a special is just offer and test different offers. In some cases, it might be breaking up into specific payments. Works extremely well. Um, but, you know, test the offer. And if, if your package isn't working, you know, I'll look at the different points here. I'll hit, look at the first three. Okay, people are doing these right. If they're doing the first three right and they're not getting the conversion I want, they want, then it's going to be the offer we need to change. Yeah. Nice and simple. You see how these points, they work with each other. And if somebody's not, you know, if their website isn't converting or their email isn't converting, it's one of these points. It's always one of these points. That's really good information. Uh, Gary Albert talks about that a lot, how uh, you know, a good offer will succeed in spite of a bad copywriter or bad copy. And uh, you know, vice versa, you have the, the world's best copy. But without a good offer that matches the market, you could fail completely. You could. And it's, it's, that's how important the offer is in the, you know, in the market. So let's cover it. The fifth point is immediate action, or we can call it a reason to act now. Okay, so, so why should they take action 
now on this offer, what will they lose if they don't take action now? Now, this works best if there's some type of scarcity attached. Yeah. It could be a limited time or a uh, limited uh, number that's available, one or the other, or it could be both. I've used both often, where we have an extra bonus that only the first 20 people get, and you also have only 48 hours to make the response to get the deal at all. Yeah. So I use both at times, or you can use one or the other. Now, it works best if you can have the scarcity. And here's an interesting thing on email. This wasn't true years ago, but it's been so true the last two years. Um, I used to run these week-long specials, and they worked really well all week. Now I have what I call the heart attack curve if I run a week-long special. And that is very few sales for the first four days, and all the sales come in the last day. Okay, but People are really motivated by scarcity today to such a point that most of the time I only do like 48-hour specials now. Okay. When I run a special by email, because all the sales are coming in the last 48 hours anyway, and I call it a heart attack curve, um, but I did a special like this five days long, and um, the first like two days, I had like three sales, okay? okay. Um, we come down to day four, we were at maybe 12 sales. The last day of the special, we hit like 100 and something sales. Wow. Like, that's the heart attack curve. <laughs> Because you're like, this offer failed miserably, <laughs> you know, until the last day. And that's when all the sales come in. So it's kind of like you uh, freak out for the first few days to get oh, something's wrong, what's going on, it's not working, and then bang. Bang, it's, it, that scarcity hit, you know, when it really became important. So now I just like skip the first few days and most of the time just do a short 48-hour, maybe 72-hour special. Yeah. To a hit special, and it could be you know an extra bonus you're offering. It could be a discount price that you're offering during this. But it's just, like I always do a you know even I don't do like these big product launches, create a whole bunch of affiliates and everything like that. It doesn't really fit the mo business model I have. But when I release a new product to my list, I do it as a product launch to my own list, just because I'll run a discount special during the first period, even if I'm selling the product later, which I almost always do. I don't just do products like one off that you know I sell and then they're gone because yeah. I like to, my goal in business is to have money continue coming in. Yep. Not just, you know, big surges, but I'll usually run some type of discount special at the very beginning saying this price will not be available again on this product. You know, when I first launched, so basically it's a founder's only price. It's, you know, the immediate action price. Yep. And we get insane sales during that first period. And, you know, you do your little lead up with emails, letting people know about it coming up and then you launch it. Now let's take, let's take a product where you don't have that scarcity where it's, on, it's let's say it's selling on your website all the time. Well, we'll throw in whether if you're an affiliate promoting somebody else's product, you can still use the scarcity by throwing in your own bonus for a limited time. Right. So anybody who buys this affiliate product from me, you know, within the next 48 hours also gets this special bonus report I created or the special bonus software that I had created for it. Just send me over the receipt or whatever other method you use online. You could be automated in some cases and you'll get this special bonus. So that's how you do it as an affiliate also. But let's say that you're now selling something that this is the regular price all the time on the website. And it's, we'll say it's a digital product so also, so you're not going to run out. Everybody knows you're not running out of eBooks yeah. <laughs> this week. Okay. Um, <laughs> I saw recently even ClickBank has gotten tighter on this and making sure that there's a scarcity. It has to be a real scarcity. Yeah. They've, they've gotten tight on that, which is a good thing also. Um, but what you do in this case, is you, so you don't have the real scarcity, you're not going to get the same strength of response. But what you do in this position is you go back and talk about what they're going to lose out on if they don't take action now on this. You know, what, how, are they gonna, how is the problem going to get worse? Yep. in their life. So you take them right back to that problem, agitating the problem. Here's how the problem is going to get worse if you don't take action today. Hmm. You know, um, Here's how you're going to miss out on these benefits. Here's how much it's going to cost you not to take action today. I use that one a lot in business, you know, in the business field, because yeah. if you don't get my information and you're running an online business, let's just say that you know, I'm, give, I'm selling information on, you know, we'll say on a pay-per-view, you know, how to advertise on pay-per-view, yeah. and you don't, you don't get my information, you're going to easily waste 10 times the money testing this stuff out for yourself right? just by not getting a product. So that's how you do it in these cases. Okay. Fantastic. All right. So we've got five things right there. So desperate problem, a unique promise, overwhelming proof, irresistible offer, and immediate action. Immediate action. And if your you know, website or your emails aren't converting, you're missing one of these points. Every single time you're missing one of them. And if you take these five points as a copywriter and you take them and start using them, like if a client sent you over something to review, just run it through this, you know, run it through in your mind these five points first, you'll spot their problems really quickly. Yeah. That's the benefit of this because I, I could teach these to um, beginners online and they were very quickly spotting people's problems on their websites. Okay. And 
It's a little tougher in the emails because sometimes the sections are a little shorter. But on a website, it's very easy to spot these problems, even for a beginner. So you look for these five problems. And uh, what you do is, you, if it's your own website, it's a little tougher as your own website but you, or your own email. But you take a step back for a couple of days. And then come back and review it and say, am I covering the desperate problem here? And remember, desperate problem, unique promise need to be above the fold on a website. They need to be quick. Okay. Overwhelming proof needs to be backed up as soon as someone says, you know, basically proof needs to come in pretty quick as soon as someone is saying, you know what, I don't know if I believe that, which is pretty <laughs> quick if you're making a good unique promise. Yep. So proof comes up early. I remember when I first uh, learned copy from some of the experts, the proof sections were much later in the copy. You actually had the models that we followed and proof you ended up coming in maybe the fourth or fifth page in a long copy sales letter. Yeah. Well, you're dead if you wait that long today to okay. start providing proof. It has to come in much earlier that people are already saying, you know, I, I don't know if I believe if we're talking a long copy website, I'd be saying that the proof needs to be in by the first end of the first page or beginning of the second page if it's you know if you actually printed it out. Yeah. That's how quick it's coming in now. And if I can, I start throwing proof in immediately, such as even as simple as throwing a photo of the author or somebody involved in the project and then a quick statement about who they are and why we should listen to them yeah. at the very top of the page. See that gets it above the fold. Okay. Same thing in an email. In an email it might just be, you know, throwing in a few insert specifics. See, this is what we miss. Sometimes proof is a lot easier than people think. Yeah. Just throw in specifics about your story. You know exactly when it happened. Exact numbers. You know, not the old statement we always use: "You didn't lose fifty pounds; you lost forty-nine and a half." <laughs> you know, right. it's the very specific. You know exactly, specifically what happened. Dropping those into your stories in the emails are a form of proof. Nothing yeah. should get past your review of the email if it's not specific. Right. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And if it's specific, they're more likely to believe it. Exactly. That, that's part, it's part of the proof element that you're, you're specific. You know exactly when this happened. You know the exact numbers it happened with. And um, it, it comes back to those. So these are the five points. And always review everything you do by these five points, and you're going to see much better success. And here's the funny thing. Here's how you can even use it. I'm throwing in, I'm throwing in a lot here for the people listening <laughs> to this. And you know, take this point. When I go into a new market and I'm examining the competitors, Okay, so I'm seeing what they're doing. I, I judge the websites of the competitors by these five points, too, seeing what they're doing. And I, I will actually sit down with a spreadsheet, take well, the top five competitors, might be a little bit more than that, might be less than that, depending on the market. Mm. But I'll take the five, five competitors, examine them all by these five points, and have on my spreadsheet what they did for each main point. Yep. So I can see what they're doing. That's how you analyze competition also. That's a great idea. You get so many ideas that way. You know, and again, because it's so quick to judge their site, you can judge exactly what they're doing, seeing what problems they're focused on. They might have things that you didn't think of. They might have promises you didn't think of, but now I have a list of all their promises there, so I know how to make my promise unique. It, again, is a strong way to use these five points in everything you do online with, that's involved with persuasion. Okay. Fantastic. Thanks for sharing all of this, Terry. This has been uh, great. Let's finish up, man. How about you uh, tell us a bit about where can people find you, you know, what products do you have? Give yourself a plug. Hop on over to mymarketingcoach.com, which is my um, free blog. And as soon as you go there, register to pick up a free copy of my newsletter. Um, there's, I have a monthly, the monthly mentor club, which is a $29.95 per month newsletter. It, it comes with a print newsletter each month, usually 15 to 19 pages that gives you step-by-step -step system online that's working today with your advertising, with your marketing, with it to improve your conversion. And it, in addition, the clients in that program also get, a, each month we have a webinar reviewing one of our client sites using the Golden Glove system plus some other systems I do to help analyze their markets and their marketing. And you get, basically you get to see it in action and see all different types of niches being improved. We have a real problem in internet marketing, and that is everyone seems to only talk about internet marketing sites. <laughs> they don't talk about sites outside of internet marketing, yep. where the majority of money is everywhere else. 99% of the money online is in something else other than internet marketing. Yep. And you get to see those taking place each month on the reviews. Plus, we have a discussion board that I often participate in to help with any questions that you might have with marketing. That's, but what I want you to do right now is I want you to go to mymarketingcoach.com where I give you a free copy of my newsletter from that club. And this free newsletter will teach you the seven ways to double or triple your email profits today using stories. Okay. And it will give you basically seven different ways to create the stories and to create your emails out of it. And you get that for free just for going over to My Marketing Coach and signing up and add, you know, asking for more information about it. Awesome. Cool. We'll all have a link over there to mymarketingcoach.com on the show notes on my website there so people can go there if they need to find it where it is 
Thank you for coming on the show, Terry. Oh, thank you. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening. If you want to discover more insider tips, tricks, and secrets about driving sales with email marketing, sign up for daily email tips from the autoresponder guy. Go to dropdeadcopy.com slash podcast, sign up, confirm your email address, and I'll send you daily emails on how to improve your email marketing and make more sales via email. You'll find out why open rates don't matter and the seven-letter word that underlies all effective marketing and much more. Oh,